Hello everyone, let's continue with the N well and the P well formation. So the next step is again to protect one of the areas. So as we said that N well will be used for PMOS fabrication and P well will be used for NMOS fabrication. Both can't be done at the same time. We need to protect one layer while we while we need to protect one area while we fabricate the other. So let's try to see how do we do that. So the same the same steps arrive over here. You deposit a layer of photoresist and then you define patterns which layer you have to protect. For example, in this case, we'll use the mask to the next mask to it will we'll try to protect this area. So now in the in the past video we have talked about how does this mask mask to looks uh, looks into a layout. So if you look into a general layout, so let's say if you look into your top view of a layout, this is a this is a CMOS inverter layout which I have drawn in Magic. So if you look into this particular layout, the mask to will generally refer refer to this one so what you see as a top view of your mask to is nothing but you that is the this is the cross-sectional view of your mask to so now it is very easy to relate the layout with your mask so this is how this is how the fabrication team and the layout team communicate with each other so there are certain files that they exchange between each other but this is how it looks like if this was see if this is your top view for your mask to for your active area this is this will be that cross-sectional view of your mask in the in the active area okay so now we have this mask too the next step is to expose this photoresist to an uv light so the same thing happens the the light doesn't the light doesn't react with the resist which is under this area it only reacts with the area which is which is exposed and then and when, once you wash away this particular you wash this particular thing into a in, into a solution this particular area of your photoresist gets washed away okay so now this area is available for any chemical reactions or anything that we have to do over here so the next step is to remove the mask mask itself and and finally you have to create a p well over here so the p well is done using a boron boron is a p type material okay we are not discussing the details of boron boron itself as an atom or an ion just take it from me that the boron is a p type material and it is it is it is diffused into into this particular p type substrate using a process called as ion implantation so boron being a p type it creates a p well over here and the energy that need that is that is needed to diffuse the boron through the oxide layer present over here it's about 200 kilo electron volts we'll talk about we'll talk about the energy and the ion implantation process in a separate course in this in this set just take it from me that it is ion implantation is a process like like some there are some ions that has that is getting shot inside the inside this particular area with a very high energy okay so boron is a p type material which needs a high energy because it has to pass through this particular thin oxide and then enter into the p type substrate so the amount of energy a, a bit of higher energy is needed over here it's about 200 kilo electron volts and the boron gets gets it penetrates through the oxide layer and it enters into the in, in, into this particular active area into, into this particular p substrate creating an active area p well over here now while boron penetrates through the oxide layer is it does damage this particular oxide layer so we'll talk how do we repair the damaged oxide layer we'll come to that in in a separate in in in, a, in a upcoming videos for now we'll just deposit or we'll just we'll just ion implant the boron which are which is the positive type material into the substrate using using ion implantation with a an high energy of 200 kilo electron volts okay so we'll do a similar step for the for the well as well you deposit uh, so i have just cut down some process steps over here you deposit the full resist you create a mask over here you expose it to the uv light this section of your resist gets exposed to the uv light and hence can get easily washed away okay so so I've, I've just cut down those steps just to save time in this case and and just to save repetition of steps so in this case now this particular area is being exposed to to any kind of any kind of reactions or process that we need to do so when, in order to create an n well process or in order to create an n well we need to we need to use a phosphorus as a material so phosphorus is an n type material and it's a bit heavier than boron so ion implantation is again the same process we use same ion implantation process to implant phosphorus that it penetrates through the oxide layer and creates an n well over here okay the energy of the energy of this particular phosphor is uh, phosphorus the ion implantation energy for depositing or for uh, for implanting the phosphorus atoms is, is a bit high uh, because the phosphorus are phosphorus atoms are heavier than your boron atoms okay so next it creates a and it creates an n well over here and once it creates the let's, let's name it over here so it creates an n well over here so we are we have created the wells over here but the but the depth of the wells are not finalized yet so these are just the well creation next we have to diffuse the well so that it occupies almost half of the substrate area so that we have clear room available for the pmos and nmos fabrication 
okay so the next step is to take this thing take this complete uh, substrate into a using using this particular structure into a high temperature furnace it is called as a drive-in furnace okay so the next step is to take this into a drive-in furnace put push it to a very high temperature at uh, for a very long time let's say about 1100 degrees celsius for four to six hours and that will drive in the boron the, or diffuse the at uh, the boron and the phosphorus atoms into the p type substrate forming clear wells over here, wells over here so these are called as twin tub process okay so the, why it is called twin tub so it, it, we can consider this as one of the tubs and this is uh, this is the another tub so there are twin tubs in which in this particular n well we are we are going to create an p mos transistor in the p well we are going to create an n mos transistor so this is the first step towards creating the pockets that we were talking about in the in the in the previous lecture okay so so now that we have created the p well and the n well the next step is to create the gate the the first the first step that we are going to do is create a gate so gate so, so we have learned about transistors in in a in a separate videos where we talked about transistors consist of source drain and gate and so the next step will be to create two different gates for the for the p mos and the n mos and we'll look into the fabrication steps for that so let's try to look into all that in the next video thank you